Hello everybody, this is Dr. Nadeem and we are with Neelam Path Lectures, the Pursue series. As you are aware, all our lectures are available on YouTube. We also have a Telegram group which you can join, which is very helpful for accessing all lecture related information. We have a Google Drive where the PDF of all lectures are available and they are freely downloadable. These are the disclaimers. And we have with phase three, which is recorded pathology lecture. And today we have Pursuit 21i, which is immune disorders. And we are streaming from Ames Bhubaneswar. And to talk on today's lecture, we have Dr. Amit Kumar Adya, who's a professor in the Department of Pathology and Lab Medicine, Ames Bhubaneswar. He's an ex-professor in Kalinga Institute of Medical Sciences, Bhubaneswar, with 118 publications in international and national journals, one book chapter, 600 projects, 21 years of teaching and research experience. He has completed five collaborative research products fund funded by DBT and BRNS with the best paper award in IAPM 2005. With this, I would request uh, Dr. Amit Kumar Adya to start his lecture on graft rejection and primary immune deficiency disorders. Over to you, doctor. Thank you so much. Hello, students. Welcome to the lecture on immune disorders. In this lecture, I shall talk on graft rejection. Many organs can be transplanted from one person to other. They include the lungs, heart, liver, kidney, pancreas, bone, skin and cornea. The biggest hurdle in transplantation is graft rejection. Kidney being the most common organ to be transplanted, our further discussion will be focused on renal allograft rejection. But the general principles will apply to most other organs as well. Rejection is a process in which T lymphocytes and antibodies produced against graft react against and destroy the tissue grafts. This statement says a lot about the process of rejection. It says that T cells and antibody, they mediate the process of rejection. The graft antigens are basically HLA antigens or the human leukocyte antigens of the donor. There are two types of graft rejection, T cell mediated rejection and antibody mediated rejection. T cell mediated rejection can be an acute rejection or a chronic rejection. T cell mediated rejection is also known as cellular rejection and it is brought about by the CD8 positive and CDA4 positive helper T cells. On the other hand, antibody mediated rejection is basically due to B cells producing antibodies against the graft antigen. It is also known as a humoral rejection. The humoral rejection or the antibody mediated rejections can be of three types hyperacute rejection, acute antibody mediated rejection, and chronic antibody mediated rejection. Let us understand the mechanism of rejection in some more details. The HLA antigen of the donor are recognized by the host immune cells. This happens by two mechanisms, the direct pathway and the indirect pathway. Anything that is blue in this diagram belongs to the donor and anything purple belongs to the host. So the blue cells are the donor cells and the purple cells are the host cells. This will help us understand the mechanism better. In the direct pathway, donors antigen presenting cells present the antigen to the host or the recipient's T cells. Both CD4 positive and CD8 positive T cells are activated and they attack the blood vessels and the tubular epithelial cells of the grafted kidney. On the other hand, in the indirect pathway, the recipient's antigen presenting cells, they activate the T cells of the host. The T cells, usually the CD4 positive helper T cells, they will activate the B cells to produce plasma cells and plasma cells will produce immunoglobulins or antibodies. These antibodies are directed against the HLA antigen of the grafted cell. 
so the antibodies will bind to the endothelium of the blood vessels present within the graft and they will cause the destruction or the rejection hyper acute rejection it's a rejection which occurs within minutes or hours after the transplantation you must be aware that the kidney transplant or the kidney donor kidney is taken and the renal blood vessels are anastomosed with the blood vessel of the host so as soon as the kidney blood vessels are anastomosed with the recipient's blood vessel blood of the recipient starts flowing into the allograft and as soon as blood flows into the graft the immune cells of the host also enter into the graft and as soon as they enter they identify the antigens present on the graft as foreign and mount an immune response this leads to hyper acute rejection which occurs within minutes or hours of transplantation this process is complement dependent cytotoxicity where inflammation occurs and the antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxic city phenomenon occurs this is basically due to presence of preformed antibodies within the recipient the recipient if has taken blood transfusions then he is exposed to the hla antigens of other human beings exposure to such hla antigens of other human beings leads to formation of antibodies against hla antigens and these antibodies they keep circulating within the blood of this of these patients so when they receive a kidney or allograft the patient already has preformed antibodies against the hla antigen and hence these pre preformed antibodies they will mount an immediate immune response which leads to hyperacute rejection grossly you will find that the kidney becomes rapidly cyanotic it becomes blue mottled and becomes very flaccid only a few drops of blood bloody urine may come out in, from the kidney microscopically endothelial injury is predominantly seen this endothelial injury is basically due to the antibodies which lead to endothelial damage and fibrin clotting so the endothelium are plugged with fibrin and thrombi once there is endothelial injury inflammation sets in the inflammation is mostly by neutrophils and this inflammation occurs within peritubular capillaries there is fibrinoid neck due to occlusion of these blood vessels there is fibrinoid necrosis in the arterial wall the thrombotic occlusion of these capillaries lead to ischemia and fibrinoid necrosis of the arterial wall whole of the cortex of the kidney can also undergo necrosis which is known as renal cortical necrosis so all the things that are highlighted in red are the characteristic features of hyperacute rejection of the kidney it occurs within minutes and hours it's a complement dependent cytotoxicity there is endothelial injury inflammation of the peritubular capillaries fibrinoid necrosis of the arterial wall and renal cortical necrosis acute cellular rejection it's mediated by the t cell three types of lesions are seen in this con context tubulitis endothelitis and vasculitis so basically there is inflammation of the tubules there is inflammation of the endothelium of the blood vessels and there is vasculitis that is inflammation of the whole of the wall of the blood vessels in the figures which are shown here you can see on the right side the top figure shows a tubule and within the tubule lymphocytes have accumulated the accumulation of lymphocytes within the tubule is known as tubulitis or inflammation of the tubule similarly the lower picture on the right side shows a blood vessels there is a lumen the lumen is lined by endothelium and the endothelial layer is infiltrated by lymphocytes infiltration of lymphocytes within the endothelium is known as endothelitis if the inflammation extends into whole of the wall of the blood vessel then it is known as vasculitis 
and because there is inflammation and injury to the endothelium there will be activation of clotting factors and that will lead to formation of fibrin clot the fibrin clot will lead to occlusion of the blood vessel and there will be ischemic necrosis of the area to which the blood vessel was supplying blood acute rejection can be antibody mediated as well so acute rejection can be either cellular rejection which is mediated by t cells or acute rejection can be humoral or it is antibody mediated rejection in this type of rejection the antibodies will bind to the hla antigen of the blood vessels of the graft binding of antigen to antibody will lead to complement activation complements are activated and they lead to endothelial injury which is known as endothelitis injury to endothelium will lead to activation of clotting factors and there will be clot formation within the endothelium the by products of complement activation that is c4d gets deposited within the endothelium and lumen of the blood vessels and this happens typically in capillary switches which are in and around the tubules of the kidney they are known as peritubular capillaries so peritubular capillary inflammation thrombosis and c4d deposition are typical features of acute antibody mediated rejection the figure shows you a kidney histology of a kidney the left hand side shows the tubules and the peritubular capillaries the arrow shows points towards peritubular capillaries in which the neutrophils and inflammatory cells have accumulated the right side of the figure shows some brown colored structures this brown colored structures are basically c4d which are deposited within the peritubular capillaries chronic rejection so apart from having hyperacute rejection and acute rejection the graft can also undergo a chronic process of rejection in fact invariably all grafts that are uh, transplanted will one day or some day will undergo chronic rejection chronic rejection is inevitable typically the chronic rejection occurs in the blood vessels and glomeruli of the graft where you see intimal thickening and inflammation of the blood vessels the glomeruli will show you fibrosis inside the glomeruli inside the capillary tuft and around it that is known as periglomerular fibrosis inflammatory cells will infiltrate into the glomeruli there will be fibrosis in the interstitium the tubular epithelial cells will be damaged and there will be tubular atrophy with loss of renal parenchyma the tubular interstitium will also show infiltrates by inflammatory cells which include natural killer cells plasma cells and lymphocytes this chronic rejection is mediated both by antibodies that is humoral response as well as the t cells typically the cd4 positive helper t cells so the both cellular and humoral mechanisms play a role in occurrence of chronic rejection graft versus host disease this another problem that we face in organ transplantation here the donor t cells please pay attention the donor t cells not the recipient's t cell the donor t cell identify the host cell as non self and try to kill them so whenever we give a graft or transplant kidney or bone marrow or anything into another person some of the t lymphocytes from the donor also enter into the circulation of the host these t cells they can also identify the host cell as foreign and try and mount an immune response against the host tissue it can occur as a chronic process or it can be very acute process 
and mostly it is seen with hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. Stem cell transplantation as you know is given to patients who have aplastic anemia or patients who have been treated with chemotherapy for leukemias. So such patients are given hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. So along with the hematopoietic stem cells a lot of normal T cells also enter into the body of the host giving rise to this graft versus host disease. Many organs are affected in this disease the skin, the GI tract, bile duct and most of these if you note are areas where there is rapid cell turnover. So they are mostly epithelial areas such as skin and GI mucus and bile duct all three of which are rapid turnover areas. Graft versus leukemia effect. The T cells or the donor T cells that enter into the host not only causes graft versus host disease but has also some beneficial effects on the host. The donor T cells they mediate graft versus host disease. They also are required for engraftment of the transplanted hematopoietic stem cells. This particularly important when we are talking about bone marrow transplantation where the hematopoietic stem cells are transplanted for engraftment these hematopoietic stem cells must go into the bone marrow of the recipient and then they must reside there and get engrafted for engraftment of these stem cells the donor T cells are essential if the donor T cells are not there then engraftment failure may occur these T cells they are also capable of suppressing Epstein-Barr virus infection in the patients. So this is particularly important when leukemia patients are being treated. The leukemia patients usually get chemotherapy after which all the leukemic cells they die the bone marrow becomes totally empty. So normal hematopoietic stem cells are transplanted into these patients. In, with a hope to generate normal bone marrow. So along with the normal hematopoietic cells, the donors T cells also enter into the bone marrow and they help the patient's hematopoietic stem cells to be engrafted. But this leads to graft versus host disease. So it is a usual practice to process the sample or process the cells to be transplanted to remove all the unwanted T cells from the sample. If we remove all the unwanted T cells then these T cells which were actually helpful for engraftment are not available. Further the T cells also help in killing any residual leukemia cells which are present within the patient. So absence of T cells or purification of the hematopoietic stem cells leads to absence of these helpful T cells that will lead to non-engraftment and will lead to further proliferation of the residual leukemic cells within the host cells. This is known as graft versus leukemia effect. So those are some of the issues and problems that are faced with transplantation. So that would be all for this lecture. Hope to see you in the next lecture. Thank you.